As in this video, we are going to see a real world application of deep learning like this. This is a fly face mask detection. So if you are interested, watch the rest. Hi, my name is Amir and this is April. In this channel, every week I share a video to help you guys to sense the real power of deep learning and AI. In this video, we learn how to implement a deep learning model to detect whether a person wears a mask or not. Most of the deep learning models we are working with, you have to show the model the data. In this project, we have two kind of faces. A person face with a mask or without a mask. Let's see some examples here. I have on my computer. Here we have, have some problem with obvious settings. That's reverse the color as you can see here. And some people with masks like this. And another example. And another example. This is the person without a mask and without a mask. I will feed them to a network and train them to detect whether a person has a face mask or without a face mask. Let's go to implementation. Okay. For this video, I'm going to use an article in PyMesh search website. You can check, I put the link in description. And this is a very, very wonderful site for computer vision and open CD. You can check the website from below. So let's go to implementation. I was tired to uploading and creating movies about the introduction of deep learning, machine learning. So I jumped a big step to create a big project here. I, if I found a little time to create the introduction to TensorFlow. I'll surely do that. But you know, there is a lot of resources in the internet and Google, YouTube, you can check to uh, learn about more the TensorFlow and the introduction to Contribution and OpenSea. This is the real world um, project. Okay, let's import the packages we need. I will tell you guys as we go through this project, what are these packages uh, and Okay, let's initial something like initial learning rate, something to e one power minus four, I think is okay. Impacts for training the model. Let's set it to 20 and the batch size. I think, I guess, you know the basic concepts of machine learning, so you're familiar with these concepts. If not, please stay a little time to like, create a movie. Let's open the VS Code, oops. Let's open the VS Code terminal. As you can see here, let's say, make it more, Bigger, uh, moving bigger together. Okay, I hope it's you can see the terminal below. Um, let's go to the project directory by um, okay, as you can see here. I am in the face mask detector directory now. And uh, we have a data set here. I want the pass to this data set. Okay. Okay, I want to define a pass to our data set folder that you can see here in, in this uh, directory. Okay, let's define a variable called image pass and define this. This is the image passed to our data set. You find two more lists to save the data, empty list and the label. 
In terminal here, I want to go to data sets and um, one of the mask or without mask. Let's go to without mask. Okay, as you can see here, we have a bunch of files here uh, like this. So the path to the file is to AMHF COVID-19 face mask detector dataset without mask and the name of the file. Uh, here, I want to read this file one by one and extract the label from the folder name that is without mask or with mask. Okay, let's see how to do this. Okay, here I write a loop for every image in the image pass for img image pass okay i want to extract the label like this label equal to img dot split i want to split them by the backslash here split os it's depending on your operating system. If you are using Windows, the separator is a slash. And if you are in Linux based operating system, the, op the operator, the separator is backslash. So I use it more general. US dot path dot separator. This returns a list. I want the, the last element of this list is the name of these pictures like 455.jpg before this name of this picture we have the label without mask or not so the list powerful i created videos about list in python how much the list in python are powerful you can check the above link for more information okay we have the label now and I want to load this image and some and do some pre-processing on this. Let's see what we have here. We have image equals to load image and the I guess here I okay now it's okay. And the tire got size. Okay. Target size. Now we load image to the image variable. I want to convert this image to array. Let's see image equals to img to array and pass the img. And I want to do some uh, predefined pre-processing that is defined in TensorFlow. I will show you what I mean. Pre-process input and I pass the image. I import all of these load image, image to array and pre-process input from the TensorFlow. Here, load image, image to array and pre-process. This is the faster way uh, we can choose the target size by loading the image by OpenCV and resize it, some pre-processing it with OpenCV. But this is much, much faster if you do it with TensorFlow. So here I use TensorFlow to do this. Okay, we have uh, read the images. I want, I want to append to the data list that I created here to empty list data that append the image and the label label dot and the label okay i think this is for the reading this is enough if we want to feed these images to this every element in the list is an array we have to convert this list to a numpy array so let's see how to do this i write here data mp dot array 
Uh, data and D type to <clears throat> float flow 32 I think is okay and the label to MP array has the label and the uh, the type to um, label. Oh, no, we don't want to change the data type for label because they are string. Okay, I want to binarize and create uh, one hot encoding from the labels. If you don't know what is one hot and encoding and something like this, please wait to create. And if you are familiar, it's okay. Let's see, I create, I import a built-in TensorFlow package here, label binderizer, so I make an object from it here, LD, label equals to LB dot has some methods, fit transform and pass the label, oops and some another method these are categorical pictures and i mean some of them are with mask and some of them are without mask so uh, labels will be to to Categorical that is I import here from TensorFlow to categorical TensorFlow utils and pass the labels. Let's check. I have not had any errors. Mm -hmm, it's okay. Okay, now I want to separate the train and test data. I make a video about machine learning in Scholar, how to use train test split data. You can check the above link. Uh, I want to train X and test X train Y and test Greg equals to this has to be an object like this and train test is split we'll pass the data labels uh, this is the object for uh, data generator in data argumentation. This is the generator for data argumentation. Uh, rotation range is 20, zoom range, and some other uh, parameter. This is not so important. Okay, here for the base model, I use the mobile nets, that is pre trained model you can use. Uh, I imported it from here. Um, here, mobile nets. Curated applications have some pre trained uh, models. That's the one of the best models you can use for this work is mobile nets. I use it, let's say, to five. We can choose uh, what weights this model have to be. This is the neural network, a very big neural network and trained by the data in ImageNet. The ImageNet is a famous uh, data set for classifying the image with, I think, 1,000 classes and 1 million uh, images in it. Uh, I defined here two weights to be the ImageNet. The top here in neural networks means the fully connected 
there is some convolutional layers here and some fully connected layers here i will create a video again about how and um, this architecture for cnn networks are but here and consider a very very big net that the first part is convolutional and the top of it it's um, one two or more than two um, fully connected layers i want to train them uh, by myself so i uh, include them i define include top to false and that's i by this i mean i just do convolutional part i here i define the input tensor i read the images here by i am with 224 and here 204 and the images have a three channels as you know okay we have this base model here now here that we have base model uh, i include the top that we have till the mobile net here to do not include the top i create a top here by myself uh, here i use a layer average pooling this is the hyperparameter for your network you can use whatever you want i guess this is the best hyperparameter that you can use i use average pooling 2d and flatten dense and drop out and again a dense this is the two categorical we want to classify this image is without mask or with a mask so we use soft max for the activation of the last layer this is the uh, top of your network you can use every architecture you want i use this as Adrian used a model by a model object here and um, I guess it inputs from the base model that's input here and the output is the head model I created by myself here I want to train this network uh, we have the convolutional layers with mobile net and I created the top of the model by myself I want to train just the top of this network so I so I use this for loop to go over the convolutional layers to and set the trainability to false okay, I de define an optimization here Adam uh, initializing learning rate and the uh, decay and compile it this is very regular if you are advanced in deep learning um loss as binary cross entropy and the metrics accuracy and let's train the head of the model like this uh, we have defined the flow the data flow in the network uh, train x and train y define the batch size steps per epoch validation data validation steps and epochs here as you can see here this is so easy and the in the last line i want to save the trained model into this file mass model and save it to h5 format okay as you can see here we have a mask detector here that model mask detector model that is pre-trained on the uh, face detection if you want this script uh, and let the tensorflow do this job you have the finally this file mass detector dot model and we will use this file to create and detect first pictures and then for a live face mass detection so up to here we have created this model and we don't have any specific use here so stay tuned for the next videos thanks for your watching please spend a little time to subscribe and like this video if you find this video helpful thank you i see you next.